Hey everybody, it's Michelle Crawford and I'm live coming at you from my kitchen today. Welcome to my live stream. Woo! <laughs> today in my week of live streaming, we are finally going to talk about extract craft. What? There it is. They gave me a shirt when I was in Colorado to film all the videos on there that we did on their website and on their YouTube. And I'm proud to wear it because I'm their spokesperson for this year. And I am just so excited to share their two machines with you that I have here in my kitchen. The Source Turbo right here. Do do do. There she is. And hello, I have an Eto Pro. Are you jealous? You should be. <laughs> so I have the two ethanol recovery machines that are made by Extract Cap right here in my kitchen. And we're going to share them with you today. But even more exciting than that, I'm going to share with you some, some news about um, CBGA and CBDA, these awesome um, cannabinoids that come from like raw, undecarboxylated cannabis that I use a lot to formulate um, my blends, Trifecta and Exacta, for my family. These are tinctures that I make that are multi-cannabinoid formulas that do contain raw cannabinoids. CBDA, CBGA. Imagine how you know, relieved and grateful I am now to read this news about how uh, the latest studies from Oregon uh, University is saying that CBDA and CBGA are helping keep COVID SARS-19 out of your cells. What? Yes. Isn't that amazing? I'm so excited and it's wonderful. Oh, you know what else is wonderful? People are in my stream. Hey, Jay O'Brien. Hey, K-Therapy, Chi-Therapy. I know who you are. <laughs> Love. All right. So let's do a quick uh, five questions Q&A on the extract craft. And then we're going to basically just do like a public service announcement about like how to make CBGA and CBDA about it, because I'm pretty sure that people are really interested in knowing how to use these uh, machines to make those things. So, OK, let's look at the Source Turbo. Check it out. OK. So uh, this is the Source Turbo. It comes with uh, the base that you plug in and it has like a rubber mat on it and this crucible where you put your wash to be concentrated. And my globe is a little bit crazed, but that's not a problem. Um, it's a globe that you put right there. The, what happens with the Source Turbo and the um, Eto Pro is that they are what's called ethanol recovery machines. And what that means is that they heat up your tincture, your wash, your ethanol alcohol wash that you've mixed with the dried botanical in that crucible at a very low temperature and under vacuum. So what this globe does is it achieves a vacuum with the lid and the seals uh, inside there. And what that does for your, for your concentrate is that it helps keep the temperature very low as it's evaporating the alcohol off and recollecting it in this globe. So the thing is that when you try to make concentrates with cannabis at home, most of the ways that people tell you to do it involve allowing the alcohol to just evaporate it off, which is cool and fine, except for that you paid for that. And it's expensive, especially if you're using um, concentrated cannabis oils for making your own carts or edibles or topicals regularly, buying that alcohol and just allowing it to poof into the air starts to kind of, mm, I don't know, weigh on your wallet, if you ask me. And while the Source Turbo is definitely an investment of a machine at like, you know, over $500, that is uh, still at the same time, if you make enough concentrated cannabis oils or botanical oils with it, you're going to get your money back pretty quickly, actually. <laughs> and it's not really hard to do. So um, the same thing is true of the Eto Pro, except for it has a larger capacity. So the Eto Pro is a big kettle right here. And the capacity of this is like about a gallon. So the capacity of this crucible inside of the source is much lower. It's about 10 ounces. So that's the difference between them. Um, the other thing is that in, in all honesty, while the source is amazing, <laughs> yeah, it's a total game changer. Oh, for you. Yes, definitely, Jenny. I, I definitely think so. We should absolutely talk about it. So as an extra bonus, I just kind of want to share where like the end product of all my work with these machines, it goes up here in my pantry that I kind of wanted to share with you guys. And I'm a little short to reach all this stuff. Usually I have a set stool. <laughs> I'm only five feet tall. I'm just going to have to admit it live on, you know, YouTube, but there I have a step stool <laughs> to reach all the stuff in my can of pantry. So, um, hey, Kyona, I know that you have an amazing pantry too, so you're probably going to love this. But so here's the CBD that I've made and the THC that I've made already. Uh, I store my concentrates in syringes because that's how they 
sell them here in San in, in California a lot is they make they sell FICO full extract cannabis oil and RSO Rick Simpson oil also known as Phoenix Tears and just all kinds of beautiful names but basically extracted concentrated cannabis oils that's what these are this is a CBD batch and this is a THC batch and I made these like about a month ago when um uh, when I when I was trying out the Eto Pro for like the first time it was amazing so how do I use these? I usually use these to formulate. It's so easy. You can see in my uh, video about making suppositories, how easy it is to just grab a syringe of concentrate. It's kind of like vanilla extract. You know, it's not like all of us are usually getting out vanilla beans to, um, to figure out how to flavor our baking with vanilla. We're usually just using vanilla extract, right? So this is cannabis extract. And I made it here at my house with these machines. And what I do with it is I use it and I combine it with oils and put it into dropper jars. And then now I have a tincture. So, you know, if I had this, this is a CBD. This is now a CBD concentrate, mix it with oil in a dropper jar. And now I have a CBD tincture ready to go. So easy. You know, there was a lot of work on the front end to make this stuff, but not as much as you might think. Okay, I'm gonna look at the chat right now because let's see what people are saying. Yes, please, can I get this in Canada? I think yes. You know, let me make double sure, but like, you know, if you go to the website right now and just see if shipping's at Canada, you know, then we'll both know, okay? Um, how long does it take to make a batch of RSO? It usually takes you a whole day. Yeah, that is a huge question. And this is where this machine is a massive game changer. So to actually use the machine to make a batch, it only takes about like two to three hours. They have, uh, the source runs like um, a, it has a turbo mode and that's why it's called the source turbo and it has regular mode. And the difference is how much vacuum is being applied and how much uh, you're going to hear the vacuum pump and it kick up. Uh, the, and also it's like the, the regular mode is a little bit slower and gentler and doesn't cause what's called bumping. Bumping is when you put a, a solution into the crucible that doesn't have all of the like little bits of particulate matter filtered out of it. And I'll share that with you in a minute. And it causes the boiling, you know, like a uh, uh, tincture to, to like splatter, which you can imagine is a problem in this closed container. And what happens is it splatters, it hits the lid, and then it kind of like gets into all the alcohol down here. Now, is this life ending or anything like that? No, it's not. It's just disappointing because you kind of wanted to keep all your concentrate in the crucible. So the solution to that problem bumping is to just filter your stuff properly. And I'll show you how it's not that hard. The thing about the Source Turbo is that it does its job and the Eto Pro, they are ethanol recovery machines. All they do is they kind of gently boil out the ethanol from your botanical extraction, leaving your concentrated botanical extraction behind. In my case, almost always FICO, although look at this. Here's some cupboard chilling um, orange peels that I have that I'm going to run through my Source Turbo or the probably the Source because not a lot, not enough for the Eto Pro to make um, orange extract for my salves. I have a video about that on my YouTube channel and here's another batch getting ready to go. And here is some um, cannabis roots that are soaking in alcohol too that I need to run. So it's not just cannabis um, oils, although that's like the number one thing, but once you have one, I mean, do what you want with it. The innovator of this product, Lee Sutherland, he has a bunch of blog posts uh, on the Extract Craft website about how to use the source to make, you know, extractions of mushrooms, extractions of like garden plants, like tomatoes. Apparently he makes some kind of amazing tomato ex extract that tastes amazing on pizza. You know, like don't limit yourself, but at the same time, it's, it's like mainly for cannabis. Okay, let's check the chat again. How long it makes you all day? Yeah, it will not take you all day. Absolutely not, like three hours. An afternoon. Will we get a demo? Kind of. Not right now. I'm only, you know, I'm mainly just talking right now. Two to three hours. Yeah. And you get your alcohol back. You know, my alcohol costs like $30, $40, you guys. Like, I don't want to just throw $30 or $40 out every time I want to make a concentrate and look at how much concentrates I've made. You know, this isn't this is really useful. So useful because what I like, and the reason why I set up my can of pantry this way is to just be able to do what I want when I want. And being well supplied is what helps me do that. So, you know, okay, 
Yes, I love these ideas. I would so, you would do so much with this machine. You really would. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of people could, and I would love for you to have one and then show it to people. I'm pretty sure you could get one in Canada. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to explain to people, but um, yeah, all you have to do really is take your cannabis or your any kind of botanical, put it together with your alcohol, just like this, just like mine right here. And then really all you need to do is like strain it out and then um, maybe strain it through a coffee filter, like really just to make sure that you got everything out of it. Like if you had no other equipment, believe me, there's like levels of extra stuff you can do. But the basic concept is combine your botanical dried. It must be dried. Okay, let's start there. A dried botanical with ethanol alcohol that has to be food grade, like you would drink it or eat it, not really, but you know what I mean? It has to be edible, not isopropyl, not denatured. That is 90 proof or above. Most people can get that um, here in the US uh, as a brand called Everclear, if you wanna go to the liquor store, or if you are in, out in um, Canada, I think there's a brand called Alcool that is popular. You can also find it in restaurants, um, supply stores, and online. I, I buy mine from Mystic Mountain H2O, H2O, I can't remember. I'll put it, I'll put it in the chat. <laughs> but yeah, I buy it from a, distill a distillery in Colorado in mass quantities. And it's uh, cheaper that way for me. It, and I've noticed uh, some people get their alcohol from like specialty places from with specialty grains. Like if you're allergic to gluten or something, I don't think it matters, but I don't want to offend the gluten uh, um, allergic people because I'm not 100% sure. So, oh, lion's mane tincture. Yeah, you know, my friend um, Linda, who also does blogging for Extract Craft, she's working on some uh, mushrooms right now. <laughs> And I completely understand that, you know what I mean? And I'm following her work very closely because I'm about to definitely start copying her work in my own kitchen with my own machines, uh, with mushrooms, definitely. Uh, the, the, what's it called? Stamit 7 mushroom tinctures that people are working on and taking every day to help their immune health and general health, not to mention all the psychedelics that are definitely being worked on by everybody. It's so exciting and, you know, really helpful with all of the mental health issues that we're all kind of going through right now. Okay, let me just make sure that I've got, um, you know, everything going with this. That's, that's, that's right. What is it? What does it do? It helps you make cannabis or other botanical extracts and saves you money in the long run by allowing you to reuse your alcohol. So, for example, look at this alcohol that I've got. Like, I've used this alcohol two times now, at least, you know, and, you know, if you were following the normal directions to just allow it to evaporate off, I'd be spending every time. So, ta-da, nope. <laughs> All right, what does it do? How do I use it? Well, I showed you my extracts that I already have, but today I'll be using it to make an extract of CBGA and CBDA. Uh, both of these machines are gonna run today because I have, uh, hold on. <laughs> if you saw my buying hemp online video the other day, I shared with you some of my stash so here's some fields of hemp CBD, and here's some Horn Creek hemp CBG that you can buy from them, stem cell CBG. These are trims. These are not uh, flower levels. And, and that in that way, speaking of cost savings, kind of like even lower cost, you know, like save money on all the aspects of your work, if you, your DIY work, if you want to. So um, today I'll be working on these. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in my freezer. The first step is get it cold. I'm going to have to put so many links in the into the description later about how to do it, but it's, just stay with me. It's like, make it cold. I'm going to make these cold and I'm going to make this alcohol cold. Okay. Then in my, in my home freezer, or if there's not enough room in my home freezer, I have a deep freezer, but you don't have to use anything more than your home freezer. Some people do. If you go and join the extract craft Facebook group, you'll notice that everybody in there is like really talking through a couple of different issues. People are either trying to get started or they're trying to get better at their process or they're really trying. And the process that is the, the hardest process for most people to learn is how to make vape carts. So speaking of Linda, she and I had a session where she showed me how she makes her vape carts. There they are. She made these beautiful vape carts out of, um, I think, a cherry pie strain that she has. And um, I don't, I'm not a big user of vape carts. I like to uh, vape my dry flowers in a vaporizing, you know, device like the Mighty by Stores and Vickle or something like that. So um, learning how to make vape carts is something that is like a push on my, on my, uh, on my repertoire, but not that, not that big of a push. 
the main thing about making smokables with these machines is that it requires you to learn a little bit more about making your wash very, very clear, very, very free of, of um, waxes, chlorophyll, and lipids that are naturally in the plants, which involves freezing it at like really low temperatures and kind of having fast processes. I'm not trying to intimidate you guys, but it's just like the hardest thing to do. Then there's a lot of like filtering, which some people enjoy and techniques there. Then there's the processing. The processing is easy. The processing is the same as any other processing you're gonna do with these machines. You put it into the machine, a filtered alcohol wash, turn it on, <laughs> let it run. And then usually I usually have to do a second round. I turn it on again and I let it run while I'm looking at it. I shake it a little bit. Okay, you guys can't see this, but I look at it and I shake it a tiny bit and I see if the viscosity of the of the concentrated material is that of like oil. It just needs to move a little bit and be maple syrupy. You do not want to let it go until it's like hard like concrete. However, none of that is a problem. Even if you do get all the way to concrete accidentally and it's stuck to your crucible, all you really have to do is get some alcohol, put it back in, stir it up, or, or oil, stir it up, clean your crucible, you're good. You've never ruined anything. It's a wonderful machine that is Super easy to actually use. The part that is hard is when you, people want to make something complicated, when they are like new, they want to make a vape cart and it's the hardest thing. And so um, they are trying so hard <laughs> to learn all of the really hardest processes, but let's just keep it simple. <laughs> the simple way to do it is to make it cold in your freezer, which is like what I said I'm going to do with these two um, raw materials, the CBG flour trim and CBD flour trim. And then I'm going to put the alcohol in the freezer as well for, you know, about like a day overnight is, is great. Um, and then I guess I'm going to have to do this tomorrow since I said that. And then I'm going to combine them really fast and then strain them out. And then I'm going to filter them with the, uh, the source turbo here has an onboard, it has an onboard filter that, uh, need filter, vacuum pump. It's right here. This little part right there is the onboard vacuum pump. And all you do is you grab this tube that comes with the um, the set for, for doing the filtering, which is this. And so here's where you start to look like a chemistry lab. And I have a video about this already where yeah, I was showing people how I was filtering the root extract that I was making. So there's going to be a ton of links in this one. So you grab these two things, put them together, and then you grab this guy and stick it on there and run it through here with these papers. Here they are. So with these papers, this is the fast flow filter and this is the slow flow filter. You take them and you stick them in there and you pour your wash through and, in, and the vacuum filter makes it run faster. So talk about saving time. This is where the vacuum filtration comes in. Like you don't have to use any of this stuff. You could literally just pour your wash through a mesh sieve and then through a coffee filter and go. Put it in the source, run it. You know, what is that? A couple, you know, four hours later, you've got your stuff. You've made your feet go. Celebrate. You've done it. It's amazing. <laughs> or when you get more experienced and you want to make different products as an end result, smokable things, what have you, you can start playing around with even more filtration, even colder temperatures in the beginning, and then post the uh, using using the source to actually make the concentrate. When you pour it out, you do have to let it evaporate off a little bit, you know, any remaining alcohol if you want to, or you can just suck it straight up into syringes if you want to. It's up to you. You could put a little bit more alcohol back into it and make a, an actual like sublingual tincture. Like I said, totally up to you how you do it. Some people keep it in like jars. Some people keep it in little tincture bottles with a little bit more alcohol so it's fluid. So that's kind of the problem with it. When I see newbies starting out with the source, they're like, what do I do? How do I make the thing that I want? And uh, there's steps, you know what I mean? So we're working on at Extract Craft making uh, lots of guides for you guys, but there's already a lot. And I'm not the only person on the internet talking about how to use it at all. And especially for mushrooms, there's a nice young man whose videos I've been watching. I'm hoping to get together with him and be like, hey, like, tell me about using the source with mushrooms because he's already making videos about it. Okay, let's look at the chat real quick. 
<laughs> Lions Main Tank Share. Not sure if finding extract craft ships to Canada, but I can buy their machine here through other companies. Yes, they are available through other retailers. And, uh, it's so it's so much easier. I did get started working with with concentrates in my real life. Well, the first time I tried to DIY something, I didn't start with flowers. I bought some concentrates at the store and they looked like this. Do you guys know what this is? Like distillate? This is a really ugly kind of distillate. <laughs> it's messy. It kind of got sticky, but this is like, um, it's, it's concentrated cannabis oil. It's like FICO, except for it's distilled a second uh, through a second process. Uh, and which, what makes it get so light and so clear, right? This is not what you're going to make with with the machine. What you're gonna make with the machine is gonna look like this, right? Whoop. <laughs> like this. So see the difference there? That's really a big deal. And the reason why this one is so clear is because it's been through a yet another incredibly commercial process that's not really recordable at home. It's a short path distillation process that is not easy to make to do in your kitchen uh, that basically just renders it flavorless, tasteless, and very clear. That's very desirable in the commercial market for making commercial edibles and commercial vape pens. But, you know, you don't need to go this far to make a useful product. It just won't be as clear. Okay. <laughs> well, um, let's see. A ton of possibilities for cannabis infused products for sure. Yeah. And I love the flexibility of having a concentrate. It just really opens it up for me. I, it allows me to put the kind of potency that I want into something very small. You guys know I love to make suppositories. And they're very small in terms of volume. They're only like two milliliters or something like that. And in order to get like 40 milligrams of cannabinoid in there, I usually have to use some kind of, of concentrate to do it. It's really hard to do with infusion. So extraction is the way forward. Okay, well, <laughs> I think that's going to be like it for today in terms of just the machines. I'm going to obviously have to do like a really big demo. But um, making CBG and CBDA with the machines is definitely easy. It's just, um, it's regularly done by people trying to make carts that are THC based. It's really important not to decarb before making a cart because it, the, it decarbs like when you heat it up and use it in the cart, in the cartridge. However, it's kind of funny, the cartridge doesn't get it hot enough to totally decarb. So you have to perform this kind of complicated partial decarb thing. And most people use what they call jar tech. And there's a lot of information about that at the Facebook users group files um, for extract craft. They, so it's really interesting that the machine is absolutely capable of making the acidic um, concentrates 100%. All you have to do is know that you're not decarbing before you do your alcohol wash using the machine. The temperatures in the machine range from to like up to 105, basically. Sometimes if you leave it, uh, it might ramp up at the end, but no, nothing that's going to trigger any kind of like serious decarbing. So you're definitely going to get an acidic neutral, an acidic cannabinoid out of it when you use when you use raw materials to make your your botanical tincture slash wash, right? And you use that to concentrate. Your concentrate will be full of acidic cannabinoids, CBDA, CBGA, depending on if you used CBD or CBG starting out or THC, which is what a lot of people use to make THCA you know, and then they're putting it into a cart and there's this kind of mix of how much decarb it has to have. But <laughs> it's so funny, right? I hope that I didn't really lose any people or make it sound too complicated. It's really, really not. And I just love these machines. I, you can tell because I've literally made so much stuff with them. <laughs> That's so useful to me. And it sits right in the very front of my can of pantry, All right? All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, let's check the chat for any kind of uh, questions. I know a demo is going to be, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Just not like as a live, you guys, let me, <laughs> let me do a demo here in my kitchen. And, um, but you know, if you really want to see not a bad demo, there is already a video of me, which is how I got this job, uh, <laughs> where I introduced making orange extract in the, in the source turbo before I had an Ito Pro. So you can watch that just to get started. And they do have some other videos already. And I, I made videos with them. I'm not sure if they're released yet about how to demo it. Ah, it's so exciting. <laughs> I'm so glad that you guys joined me here on the live stream on Friday. <sighs> so let me just introduce myself. Michelle Crawford is my name and I'm a certified cannabis health coach. I went to Cannabis Coaching Institute and I'm so happy to be you know, sharing all this information with you guys 
here on YouTube, I know it's really important, more so now than ever, to get out the word about how healthy cannabinoids are for you and how we can use them to, um, I don't know, protect us from COVID even? Jeez. Whew. <laughs> so <clears throat> today was about Extract Craft, and I am their spokesperson, and I'm excited about that. But tomorrow, tomorrow is my last day of live streaming, and I'm going to talk about Swell Expo, which is a sexual health and wellness expo where I'll be giving my talk, Better Sex with Cannabis, and it's happening March 15th. And join me tomorrow at 2 p.m. Pacific Live, where I'm going to be talking about that presentation I'll be giving, Swell Expo, all the other people there. Check out their website, S slash W-E-L-L um, Expo. <laughs> Look it up on the internet. All right. Thanks, you guys. Gotta go. Love you. Mwah. Bye.